Hello, everyone. So this presentation is a deep dive into MicroTig exploits and security. Uh, so we will be talking about the analysis of recent uh, router res exploits, how the exploits were done, what did the uh, hackers, quote, quote, or the uh, attackers do with the exploited routers, and most of all, uh, probably most important of all, is we will learn about security and how all of this could have been easily prevented by network operators and network administrators. So. My name is Thomas. I'm a uh, system and network architect. I love automation and monitoring. Those are like my specialties and, and topics which I really enjoy talking about. I've also been a Microtech certified trainer and consultant for, for about eight years at this point, I think. And uh, I'm here with Unimus. Uh, so a little bit about us. Uh, Unimus is basically an automation platform, mass config push, network wire configuration search, all about automation and configuration management. Uh, if you want to talk to me about Unimus, we have a booth uh, down there in uh, uh, in the exhibitor area, so feel free to talk to me more about, uh, about this later on. Um, but about this presentation, so a lot of my presentations uh, float around on the internet as PDFs, and uh, so I started putting in this slide because people just get the PDFs and there is much more information available in the talks in the actual presentation, so this is not for you that are here, but if somebody else finds this later on, I have a YouTube channel and all of my presentations are, are on the YouTube channel with, with proper descriptions and explanations and talks. Uh, so why are we here? Why are we talking about this? Well. The number of attacks against uh, router OS increased dramatically in the last year and even more especially in the last three months. And uh, maybe quite a few of you have seen articles around the internet that talked about massive numbers of microtics being exploited around the world. So we are here to learn what happened, how to defend and to analyze what has happened to learn from it and, and not let it happen again. So yeah, we will discuss the current situation as well, what is happening on the internet right now, what is being exploited and how, and, and again, we will talk about how to not get your network uh, owned by other third parties. So, before we start, it's important to understand a few concepts and things. So, first of all, router OS runs on Linux. So, realistically, if you have access to the underlying Linux system, you can do anything you can do with the normal Linux machine. Router OS underneath is Linux. And uh, another important thing is that Router OS, while it is Linux, it runs on many different architectures. As, as I'm sure you know, we have MIPS, we have ARM, we have Tile, which is the CCR series, uh, etc. And uh, of course, we also have PowerPC. But the important thing is that to the attackers, this really doesn't matter. Because as long as the payload is compiled for the target architecture, the attackers can still do whatever they want. So they will simply either cross-compile their uh, payloads, their attack binaries to, to the target platform, or they will just compile natively on the platform, and then they simply, it, it's a Linux like any other. Uh, there is a few shortcuts uh, or, or terms that I will be using throughout this uh, presentation, so we need to discuss those as well. Uh, first of all, there is Wikileaks. Um, I, I hope most of you know what Liki Wikileaks is, so I won't explain much that one. Then there is the CIA and NSA, which are the American intelligence agencies, uh, and uh, so state agencies that, uh, that deal with intelligence and threat management, etc. Then there is Vault 7, so we will talk about Vault 7 in a little bit, so I will explain more about that one soon. Uh, then we have the term RCE, which I will be using a lot throughout this presentation. RCE means remote code executions. It, it means that you can execute arbitrary code on the router. Uh, which, of course, is, uh, is bad and should not happen. And then we have the term CNC, which simply means command and control. So uh, a lot of botnets, a lot of attack networks, they use CNC command and control servers to tell the exploited routers or the victims what to do. So we will be using these terms a lot. So before we even begin going further, it is super important that the Microtik default configuration was never affected by any of these exploits. Microtics out of the box are fully secured. There is no fault by default in Microtik. None of these exploits would be possible if proper firewalling was present on the boxes that were exploited as it is in the default configuration. 
So if any of you were affected, or all of those people that were affected by these exploits either had to modify the default firewall and turn off the proper firewalling, or they reset the configuration and didn't configure firewall at all after resetting the configuration, or there was some firewalling, but it was not sufficient. So management processes on the router were not protected. Management processes being web, SSH, Winbox, API, etc. So I just want to repeat again. Out of the box, MicroTig, are fully, MicroTig routers are fully secured because there is a lot of misconception going around the internet that blames MicroTig for these exploits, whereas this is not true. I am sorry, but we have to admit, if any of you were exploited, I'm sorry, but it is your fault. <laughs> and I don't want to put blame on anyone because I understand it's not easy to maintain large networks. But this is why we are here to learn how to properly defend against these exploits, but analyzing them by learning, by being better at security and at protecting our networks. So yeah. Uh, also, it is important to understand that this is not just micro, microtech that this has been happening to. Every single piece of software has bugs and has issues. That's just the nature of software development. Uh, if you want to know how other vendors deal with this, last year there was a huge Cisco vulnerability on the Cisco ASA, ASAS. And the vulnerability was in their VPN uh, connection, and so if you had a VPN connector enabled on your ASA, it was vulnerable the same, as the, the, the same way at the attackers could exploit vulnerable microtics. Also, same with Juniper. Just last October, Juniper published eight high severity exploits exploitable on Juniper boxes. So this is normal in the industry. In the Microtech world, up until now, Microtech has not really been noticed enough by, by attackers, so it has not been a standard that Microtech routers get exploited. This has changed in the last year a lot as Microtech gains a lot of, uh, of exposure uh, and, and as Microtech routers become extremely common around the world. But older vendors, this happens to them as well. This happens to everybody. So, Again, this is nothing special. This is not MicroTig is bad at security. This just happens. It's the nature of the software world. So yeah, just to repeat, we are here to learn how to protect ourselves from bad actors present on the internet, and we are here to see how to make a MicroTig network secure against outside exploitation with an asterisk. Uh, nothing really is 100% secure. If you want 100% security, unplug the power and unpl unplug the internet. But that doesn't mean we should not do our best to secure our networks. Okay, so how did all of this even happen? Let's, let's start at the beginning. So all of this started with Vault 7, with WikiLeaks publishing the CIA NSA attack tool sets that these agencies used to attack various Linux operating systems, uh, including routers, including Microtik. So in March 2017, uh, WikiLeaks publishes these exploit tools, and this, uh, this, uh, basically this becomes known as the Vault 7 leak. And uh, by the way, these leaks contained many zero-day and many old exploits in, uh, against Windows, against Linux in general, and against many routers, not just Microtik. Uh, if you want to check later, this is the link to the WikiLeaks article. And so yeah, as part of Vault 7, there was a router OS attack module called Chimai Red. And this module contained two exploits against router OS management services. And uh, the exploit number one was uh, RCE, remote code execution, against the HTTP server. And exploit number two was arbitrary file read through Winbox. We will cover both of those in detail in a second. So, part one, router OS web service vulnerability. So, remote code execution on routers just by seeing TCP port 80 open. So, as long, in, in any way, no credentials were required. The only thing the attacker needed was to see HTTP 80 open on a router and they could perform RCE, remote code execution. So, Chimai Red was, uh, was a vulnerability in the router OS web server. The server that runs webfig, grabs, and other things, and allowed RCE. So, yes, the attacker could execute directly direct Linux command and they could deploy direct uh, attack modules onto the Linux system itself. Of course, this, since the attacker has access to, to the underlying Linux, they have full access to the MicroTig router as itself. So Chimai Red was meant and could be used to deliver arbitrary payloads, arbitrary programs. You had full access as to any other Linux machine. So 
no exact payloads were available in the Vault 7 leaks, so it is really not known what the original intent of CIA and NSA were uh, to, to use these exploits, what they wanted to do, because those payloads were not available in uh, Vault 7. Uh, so, yeah, what has happened, of course, since the exploits became themselves became public, immediately uh, a lot of bad actors on the internet started to utilize these attack vectors to infect microtics. And uh, the most common exploit that was uh, running out there in the wild was called VPN filter. By the way, this has nothing to do with VPNs. The name VPN filter is completely arbitrary, random. And uh, there really is not much data, uh, public, not much public research on how bad actors use this uh, vulnerability on router OS. Because VPN filter affected many vendors, Cisco, TP-Link, Netgear, Zyxel, Ubiquiti even, many vendors were affected. So uh, VPN filter was a big attack family that utilized many exploits across many vendors to create large botnets. Uh, but exploitation of VPN filter on the router OS itself was not really that widespread. Uh, there was not vi widespread enough uh, if we compare that to what we are going to talk about next. Uh, so yeah, how did Microtik respond? Well, Microtik released fixes to all branches of router OS pretty much immediately after Vault 7. This was in March 2017, so Microtik fixed this in March 2017. Note, VPN filter hit around May 2018, a year later. So Microtik has fixed this a year before this was exploited in the wild. So this shows you that, first of all, the, the victims of this exploit, first of all, didn't upgrade their routers for a year, and second of all, didn't have firewall. If only you had, or, or the victims had proper firewalling, none of this would happen. So what was the impact? Well, the impact of module one was, was quite small for Microtik compared to other vendors because uh, VPN filter focused mostly on TP-Link and other vendors. And uh, as I mentioned uh, in the beginning, the default configuration of Microtik was never vulnerable in the first place. So luckily for Microtik world, the impact was not that large compared to what will be coming next. So how could I have defended against this, or how could have you defended against this, is simply to have proper firewalling. That was the only thing needed. If, if there was a firewall, the router was not exploitable. And also, even if there was no firewall, if the router was up to date, the router would not be exploitable. As we said, this was fixed a year before it was exploited in the wild. Okay, so how to remediate if I was exploited by this? The only way to make sure an infected router is cleaned is net install. The only way. Resetting to default configuration will not help. It's not enough because the attackers had access to the underlying Linux system. It was a remote code execution. This means they could have created hidden partitions on the file system. They could have installed different rootkits, blah, blah, blah. There is so many ways to hide uh, payloads and, and uh, uh, vulnerabilities in the system. So updating router as might not be enough. Uh, resetting configuration might not be enough. The only way to make sure you're 100% sure to be fixed after being exploited by an RCE is to net install. This is because net installed formats the flash and installs a clean new system. And since the flash is formatted, any hidden partitions or anything else would be overwritten. Okay, so part two. Uh, this is another exploit that has happened. And this is the Winbox client side exploit. So attacking administrator workstations directly through infected routers. So while module one of Chimai Red was being utilized, a new exploit was discovered. And this exploit is Winbox malicious DLL delivery to execute arbitrary code on the administrator's workstation. So what happened? Winbox would load and, and execute arbitrary DLLs delivered as a part of connecting to other router as versions. So, uh, if if you, any of you ever used RouterOS back in version 5, how Winbox worked back in RouterOS version 5 was that the router delivered to Winbox certain DLLs that were loaded by Winbox to uh, know what capabilities were available on the router and how to manage the routers. This was all fixed uh, or, or all changed in, router, in Winbox version 6. Winbox version 6 no longer downloads or executes any DLLs, but the logic of downloading those DLLs was still kept in Winbox version 3 for backwards compatibility with router OS version 5. So, 
uh, sadly, no signing or verification of delivered DLLs was done, so this allowed arbitrary code execution on the system running Winbox. So this was attacking the administrator's workstation. And uh, yeah, so in effect, someone could compromise your computer just by having you connect to a router that was seeding uh, compromised attack DLLs. Now let's visualize the exploit. So there was an infected router. Your administrator PC connected or established a Winbox session. The infected router delivered a malicious DLL. The DLL was loaded and executed by Winbox, and your PC was infected. Uh, so uh, this was first discovered in March 2018 when uh, security researchers discovered that this Winbox DL injection wo was running in the wild. Uh, so th this was done in multiple stages. Firstly, a Chimai vulnerability was utilized to deliver uh, malicious payloads to the routers. And then routers injected malicious payloads into the Winbox sessions of administrators connecting to those uh, infected routers. So this was a two-stage vulnerability. Uh, so MicroTig response, a new version of Winbox was released pretty much immediately as this was discovered. And new versions of Winbox, so version 3. I think 3.13, please don't quote me on that, you would have to look at the changelog of Winbox. Uh, so there was immediately a new version of Winbox that completely disabled loading and executing any DLLs. There is a side effect to this, and that is that newer versions of Winbox no longer support connecting to RouterOS version 5 and older. So what was the impact? The impact of this exploit or this vulnerability is not known, but it is likely extremely small. Why? Because this was a two-stage exploit, which required first exploiting a router, and then having the administrator connect to that router, and then exploit the administrator workstation. Uh, so it is speculated by security researchers that this attack was uh, used with a very narrow focus by state actors against specific uh, state interest targets. So uh, these are just rumors, there is no official confirmation. So the impact of this was very tiny and very targeted by state agencies. So how could you have defended? Well, first of all, keep Winbox up to date, and you will notice there is a pattern to this. <laughs> how could I have prevented this? So keep everything up to date. Protect your router in the first place, so it doesn't get seeded with malicious DLLs, and do not connect to unknown routers. Uh, so if I was infected, how do I remediate? Sadly, there is no easy answer to this because this attack was against the operating system of, of the computer of the administrator. So reinstalling your OS will most certainly not be enough since malware can hide in MPR, in recovery partitions, even in BIOS, and even inside your processor itself, especially with the recent meltdown, Spectre, Ryzenfall, Master Key, Foreshadow, and other exploits that have been affecting Intel and AMD CPUs recently. I, I'm sure many Many of you have uh, heard at least about Meltdown and Spectre, but there were also Rise and Fall and other exploits exploiting uh, AMD CPUs. So how to remediate your workstation from being exploited is way out of scope of this presentation. Uh, you want the short answer? Get a new computer. <laughs> That's the only way to be 100% sure. Okay, so part three, Winbox arbitrary file read vulnerability. So this is module two of Chimai Red. So here, this vulnerability allowed an attacker to read any file on the router without any authentication just by seeing port TCP 8291 open. TCP 8291 is Winbox port and therefore this is a Winbox vulnerability. Uh, so yeah, as, as we mentioned, all of the previous exploits were really very low impact compared to what happened in the recent six to eight months. So in the recent six to eight months, uh, the module two of Chimai Red has been used to exploit a very large uh, number of microtics worldwide. So let's talk about the current situation, the exploits that are running wild on the internet even right now, uh, what was the impact, etc. So what happened? As we mentioned, Chimai Red Module 2 allowed arbitrary file access through a Winbox vulnerability. Essentially, this allowed anyone to retrieve the components of the file system of the router through Winbox port. And uh, as it turns out, when you can read the file system of the router, you can uh, read the user database file. 
because that's the file that's on the file system of the router. So uh, basically, the Vinbox directory traversal vulnerability allowed unauthenticated user to retrieve the database of the users on the router. And then suddenly, you had valid username and password, which you could use to connect to the router or any other management system, you know, Winbox, SSH, API, whatever. So basically, without authentication, you would get the credentials, and after you had the credentials, you could now connect to the router in a full way. Uh, so just by seeing the Winbox port open publicly on the internet, the attacker could completely take over the router. So uh, in the first days of August 2018, uh, a botnet successfully exploited over 200,000 MicroTIG routers in Latin America, especially in Brazil. This was the first time the Winbox vulnerability was successfully used for a large-scale attack. So what was MicroTIG's response? Well, this was actually fixed back in April 2018. So again, we are noticing a pattern here. This is an exploit that has been fixed for more than half a year before it started being utilized in the wild, but as it turns out, people don't upgrade their routers. So just for reference, these are the versions in which the exploit was patched in April 2018, and in August, there was a large-scale exploit wave. Uh, so what was done to the routers by the attackers after the routers were exploited? Well, there are actually many, multiple, many variants of these exploits running in the wild. Uh, we know of at least six different families of malware uh, distributed by various botnets. So what was the impact? Uh, the impact was huge. <laughs> it, it was really big. As we mentioned, in Latin America alone, 200,000 routers were exploited. And since the discovery of these exploits, they are running wild even right now in the world, researchers estimate that over 600,000 MicroTIG routers worldwide were exploited by the attackers using the Chimai Red module to vulnerability. And also currently, worldwide, there is another 400,000 routers still running vulnerable routerless versions still not properly firewalled. So there is additional 400,000 routers just waiting to be exploited. So let's talk a, a little bit about the variants of, uh, of these malwares, the, the families that, that started attacking the routers. So uh, variant one, what I like to call the original uh, exploit family. This is the original exploit that exploited the 200,000 routers in Latin America. And the goal of this, uh, this, uh, this malware was very simple. It wanted to make money. It wanted to mine cryptocurrency. So what happened is that the attackers deployed uh, a configuration to the router that would inject crypto mining JavaScript to any web page visited by the client behind the router. In effect, making the clients behind the routers mine Monero. Uh, Monero is one of the cryptocurrencies out there which can be mined using JavaScript in the browser. So uh, basically, if you were browsing the internet behind an affected router, you would be mining Monero for, for the attackers. Uh, multiple Monero wallets were identified, and some uh, Monero wallets of the attackers were even seized and uh, cancelled, etc. But uh, yeah, so that was, uh, that was the goal of the original attack family. So how was this done? A web proxy was enabled on the router, and inside of the web proxy there were rules which injected, uh, which redirected your web traffic to an external malicious server, which injected uh, transparently some mining JavaScript. Uh, NED rules were also in the inserted onto the router to transparently redirect uh, web traffic to, to the proxy running on the router. And then there were many scripts deployed on the router that served uh, as command and control delivery methods. So schedulers were configured to pull command scripts from command and control servers. It was actually quite a clever little attack. And so let's visualize this. It's very simple. There is any PC on the network behind the uh, infected MicroTIC wants to go to a website. So the, the web traffic is captured by web proxy, and it is re redirected to an external server. A JavaScript Monero mining is inserted. Then the traffic is passed to website. The, 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 the website traffic is received and returned to the client with the injected malicious JavaScript that mined Monero. Uh, so what were the common symptoms of this attack? Well, a service user was created. New scripts were added to the router, new scheduler entries were added to the router, web proxy was enabled, net and firewall were modified, and log size was set to 1, just so you could unlock, look into the log and see what was done to you. 
a uh, clever little attack. So, uh, again, this was the original wave that exploited about 200,000 routers in Latin America. After that, uh, came uh, a second generation of the attacks, what, what I call variant one, and uh, this one was even a little bit more clever because it set up a SOX proxy on the router to attack directly the networks connected to the router through the router itself, and the proxy was also used to attack third-party services. So, how was this done? Well, a SOX proxy was set up on the router, and Utilizing the SOX proxy allowed attackers to talk directly to the local network behind the router through the SOX proxy. Also, this SOX proxy allowed attackers to anonymously attack third parties through the SOX proxy on the router. So let's visualize. This one is very simple. There is an attack server on the internet, there is an infected microtic, and bam, the attacker goes from the attack servers directly to any PC inside of the internal network through the SOX proxy on the router. Uh, the second type of attack, because we mentioned there were two, so direct attack to the local network and anonymous attack on third parties is rather simple as well. There is the attacker, there is a SOX proxy on the router, and the attacker simply proxies all of his requests through the infected router to the victim and therefore anonymizing the attacker. Uh, so uh, what were the symptoms? Usually very similar to variant one, but with the addition of SOX proxy being enabled and reconfigured on the router. And uh, variant 1 and 2 actually very soon uh, merged into a single malware family, so this shows you that uh, probably either the groups that were exploiting this merged, or it was one group behind both exploits in the first place, uh, who knows. But uh, very soon after all of this, you could see all of those things at once on the infected routers, so web proxy, SOX proxy, and everything else were being there and were being utilized by attackers. So not long after that, a third variant uh, attacked. And this time, DNS interception and redirection was the goal of the attackers. So what was done? On the router, DNS server was enabled and used malicious upstream DNS servers to hijack DNS traffic on the uh, on the network and utilize uh, malicious DNS uh, translations uh, to, for, for the purpose of the attackers. And this was also very clever by the attackers because what they did is they set up a transparent DNS hijack in NAT. So basically they set up a new NAT rule which redirected all TCP UDP 50 traffic to the router. So in your local network behind the router, even if you didn't use the router itself as the DNS server, you would still get exploited because the traffic was transparently hijacked. So even if on your computer you had the DNS server as 11111 or 88888, you know, either Google or OpenDNS or whatever, it doesn't matter, you would still get caught by the attackers. So what was the goal? Why were the attackers doing this? Well, by controlling DNS for the entire network behind the router, attackers gained control of traffic forwarding from the network and they could modify where the traffic was going as they wished. Uh, did you go to the internet banking of your bank? Well, no, you could have been redirected through DNS to a malicious attacker servers. Of course, it's never that simple because there are additional checks uh, in the browser at layer seven, there is HTTPS, etc. But the point remains, attackers can control where your traffic from your local network to the router is going. And many attacks are possible here, since basically attackers are in complete control or of traffic forwarding and, and they decide where the, where the traffic from the clients go. So let's visualize. So there is an infected router, there is any PC on the network, and the PC wants to resolve a host name using its DNS server. Well, as the traffic goes to the router, it doesn't go to the actual DNS. It gets intercepted by the router, it gets forwarded to a malicious DNS. The query is, as we said, intercepted and redirected, and then attacker has complete control to return whatever IP address for the DNS record that they want, therefore controlling the flow of traffic. 
And uh, yeah, and even after this second generation, there are many more new variants of these attacks. As, as I mentioned previously, there are at least six attack families known. And uh, V, for example, even checked some, uh, or even found some uh, crazy uh, complicated exploits that actually utilize the MAC address of Ether1 as the identifier of the router. So the, uh, the attackers could even do targeted or geo-focused attacks and control individual routers based on MAC addresses as identifiers. So uh, as time went on, the attacks became more and more sophisticated and more and more clever. And uh, then came a really interesting one. So a new attack started utilizing traffic capturing to capture unencrypted passwords traversing the router. This included Telnet, FTP, POP, IMAP, SMTP, HTTP, SNMP, etc., etc. So any password traversing the router that was not using an encrypted communication protocol was captured by the attackers. So let's visualize. This one is again very simple. Any PC on the local network wants to send or receive email. Well, client goes to the email server and the traffic is intercepted by the infected router, including capturing the username password and suddenly the attackers have credentials for this email account. They know the email servers, etc., and they can hijack it for sending spam or you know, uh, using various other email-based attacks. And uh, yeah, you can imagine. Uh, this was a pretty bad one, and it is still running out there. It is still capturing credentials and doing nefarious stuff. So, all together now, so in most currently active uh, exploits, attack patterns st are staying the same as what we have just discussed. So, there is web traffic interception and injecting using HTTP proxy. There is SOX proxying used to attack local network or redirect traffic for spoofing. There is DNS hijacking from the local network and there is traffic capture and inspection for unencrypted credentials. Signs of infection, you should be looking for these things to find out if any of your routers have been exploited. So yeah, generally there will be HTTP proxy settings modified I won't read through all of these lists since we covered most of this. This is just a summary of what you should be looking for. Uh, so how could have we defend it? I, I don't want to repeat myself, but it is as simple as having firewall. If there was firewall on the router protecting the management services, none of this would have happened. So do not allow public access to management services on your routers. If, if there is one sentence to sum up this entire presentation, it would be that. So yeah, secure access to Winbox with an address list, use a management VPN, use port knocking. Make, just make anything to, to not expose management services to the internet and to the public, and make sure all of your management tools, including RouterOS, are kept up to date. Uh, so yeah, I just want to make sure to repeat this one more time. Default configurations of Microtik were never vulnerable in the first place, so if anybody was affected, it was only because the router was reconfigured in an unsafe way. So how to protect yourself going forward? One really useful thing is have configuration change notifications. You should know when configuration of your routers is being changed. And uh, so yeah, make sure you have monitoring and monitoring includes configuration change monitoring. And uh, if, if, you know, if you had this, you would have known that the configuration of the router was modified and you would have caught the attackers modifying the config. And therefore you would know that the router was exploited. Uh, this is one of the things that our software does. I don't want to do self-promotion. So if you want to check out Unimus and if you want to check out what we do, uh, please come and visit us later at, at our booth. So how to remediate if the router was exploited? How to fix it. Well, we actually have an article on our wiki uh, that shows you what commands you should run. There is a long list of commands that would remove the, uh, the configuration that the attackers deployed to the routers. And for generation two, for the DNS hijack, well, fix DNS and fix NAT. Okay, so uh, this is, by the way, for those original exploit variants. So what is going on right now, 
is that this whole situation is getting a lot more complicated because as time goes on, as I mentioned, the attacks have gotten more serious, they have gotten more clever, and therefore you should really check your entire configuration for things that should not be there. Also, at install. We will talk a little bit about why. So if your router was exploited, was breached, you really need to reinstall. Very important, change your password. As we mentioned in the beginning, the, one of the attack vectors allowed attackers to uh, get the passwords to the router. So even if you reconfigure your router and keep your password the same, it's very probable that the attackers will get right back in because they have your password. So please make sure to, uh, to, to change your passwords because actually many people in the beginning days of these exploits were getting reinfected and they were complaining, oh, but I upgraded my Microtik, I already, Microtik said this exploit was fixed, why am I getting reinfected? Well, because you didn't change your password and the password was leaked by the, uh, by the exploits. Uh, so yes, uh, as I mentioned, this is getting complicated because in October 2018, there was another vulnerability discovered that allowed direct remote code execution through the Winbox directory traversal vulnerability. So this means things have gotten worse since October 2018. And uh, as I mentioned previously in, in the presentation, about 400,000 routers around the world are still vulnerable and out there waiting to be exploited. And since RCE, remote code execution, is now possible simply by seeing the Winbox port TCP82191 open, I can execute arbitrary code on the router. Uh, so what can the attackers do now? Well, they can do anything they want. They can install crypto mining software directly on the router. They can install malware that, go, that won't go away, uh, away after resetting the configuration because it can hide in external partitions. They can attack local networks directly from the router. They can attack the rest of the ISP's infrastructure directly from the routers of their clients, etc., etc., etc. So as I mentioned, if any of your routers were ever exploited, the only way to make sure that you are safe is to net install, not just reset the configuration. Please, if you were ever exploited, net install the router. Okay, I have one more piece for you before I finish. And this is fresh because this happened two weeks ago. So two weeks ago, a new exploit was found. And this time it's uh, arbitrary packet forwarding through the dude agent present in the routerless system package. And this vulnerability, vulnerability allows the attacker to forward arbitrary packets directly into the internal network. So this means that again, just by seeing the Winbox port open on the device, the attacker can attack the local network directly without any authentication. He doesn't care about net, he doesn't care about anything. Sees the Winbox port, can talk to the internal computer. Uh, visualization is very simple. <laughs> the attacker sees a vulnerable microtic and they attack the directly the internal network. And uh, so the, as the story goes, again, this has already been patched by microtic. So microtic is keeping up. Microtic is, is always fixing these things. So uh, just for reference, these are the versions that have this particular vulnerability fixed. So if you are at an older version than any of this, you are vulnerable if you don't have firewall. So I'm, I'm sorry, I just have to repeat this because this is that important. You, you just need to have firewall. That's all you need to have and you will be fine. So yeah, take aways for you from this presentation. Secure the management ports uh, or the management services on your router. Do not leave them open to the public. Have proper firewall. Update routers and Winbox. Net install and change passwords on compromised routers. And have monitoring, have change uh, notifications, and have backups of your configurations. And so that's, that's it from me. I have a few additional resources uh, if you want to learn more and if you want some more information. Uh, as I mentioned, I have a YouTube channel. I, I do a lot of presentations at uh, pretty much every mom that I go to. I have some MPLS, VPLS uh, presentations. I have some IPsec, a lot of IPsec uh, presentations. So feel free to check out my YouTube channel if you want a little bit more. Uh, I really like doing deep dive technical presentations. So I hope none of you fall, fell asleep during all of this. 
And uh, I am also part of the Brothers Wisp, which is a uh, ISP-focused podcast. We do a new podcast every two weeks. Uh, so it's a bi-weekly networking podcast. If you like, give us a listen. We, we talk a, a lot about random things. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions, uh, I don't want to drag on the presentation too long because we are already 